blood, flesh. Born to a harsh world where only the strongest survive. There were 30 of us originally. 30 small and weak hatchlings. One by one they were taken. I watched them die. Every single one. The more we grew, the stronger we became. And yet more of us died. Until the day came where there was no us. And only I. I was the strongest. I was the lone survivor. But the world had not changed. I had changed. Bone. Marrow. I am a hunter. An apex predator. All life trembles under my vigil. For all is prey to me. As it was destined. For only I was strong enough, fast enough, ruthless enough to survive. And now I reap the rewards of success. The reward of surviving another day. By taking the lives of the weak, the sick, the old, and the slow. This is what it means to be at the top of the food chain. To be uncontested. Except by my own. Fear. Rage. My hunger, my will to live is a constant. Satiated only by the most rewarding of hunts. Ah, the hunt. To be successful, you must start by finding your prey. Using all of your senses. Sight, smell, touch. Even taste will guide you. Once you have found your quarry, you must master stealth and positioning in order to survive. Get in close enough without being detected. Once within range, then begins the hunt, the lunge, the sprint. The time when your will to hunt must beat their will to survive. Then the closing moments, the struggle. They will fight back, kick. Yell, squirm, slam, pierce, and crash. Here you must use your strength to overpower and dominate the prey. It all comes down to the final bite. The killing blow that cuts and crushes. And then in the silence you realize you have won the hunt. You have survived the hunt and you have claimed your reward to survive another day. Come, Crackling. Only once does the pull of the hunt subside, when I must watch and protect those of my line, watching their next week after week, ever vigilant with my mate at my side. We watch and wait till I hear the sound of chirping coming from the nest. They are small and weak like I was, but they are my progeny, and they will inherit our strength to survive. But now, my temporary task is done. I leave, and the pull of the hunt comes back stronger than ever. Tyrant. The ground trembles with my every step. Rivals flee in my presence. Herds stampede at the sound of my roar. All in these lands know me, whether they walk, fly, or swim. They know my call. They fear my footfalls. They turn tail at the mere scent of where I have walked. I am Despletosaurus, and I am King.
Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be covering the first Tyrannosaur on this channel, Daspletosaurus. Daspletosaurus's first remains were discovered in 1921 near Alberta, Canada, and were originally assigned to a different Tyrannosaur species, Gorgosaurus, which we will talk about later. It wasn't until 1970 that the fossils were re-examined and reassigned as Daspletosaurus torosus, being Latin for brawny or muscular. Since then, many remains have been found, with three species being assigned to this genus. These three include the type species Taurosus, the second Windsoreye, and the third Horneryeye from Montana. This genus lived mostly in Canada between 77 and 75 million years ago in the late Cretaceous. Daspletosaurus belonged to the Tyrannosauridae family, which of course included their largest and most famous member, Tyrannosaurus rex. Daspletosaurus was not as large, but still reached lengths between 8 and 9 meters long, stood 3 meters tall, and weighed between 2 and 3.8 tons. It had a typical build for its family, a massive powerful skull filled with large crushing teeth, small arms with two fingers, a robust stocky body, and a long muscular tail for balance. The skull was 1 meter long and heavily built, with some bones, like the nasal bones, fused for extra strength, yet with some openings called fenestra to reduce its weight. It had over 60 teeth, which were the largest of any tyrannosaur, but were oval in cross-section rather than blade-like. It also had crests around the eyes, likely for display, but possibly as an extra layer of protection. Like its relatives, Despletosaurus had small forearms, with two digits, though they are proportionally the longest of any Tyrannosaur compared to body size. Studies done on Tyrannosaurus rex show that it could lift over 200 kilograms with its arms, so perhaps they weren't as useless as many people believe. Daspletosaurus is very similar to Tyrannosaurus rex, with some believing that T. rex had evolved from Daspletosaurus. To compensate for its large head and robust neck, the tail was long and contained powerful muscles to properly balance itself and keep its center of gravity above the hips. Daspletosaurus lived at the same time and place as another Tyrannosaur, Gorgosaurus. And as I said earlier, they were once thought to be the same species, but were later separated. The main difference being that Daspletosaurus was slightly larger and more heavily built, while Gorgosaurus was more lightly built and more gracile. Seeing two large and very similar predators live alongside each other is quite rare, so how were they able to do so? One factor is distribution, with Despletosaurus seeming to be more common in southern parts of their region, while Gorgosaurus is more common in the northern regions. With that being said, their territories do still overlap quite a bit. The leading theory is niche partitioning, where each species would target different prey and therefore not directly compete with each other. Gorgosaurus was more lightly built and likely faster, so it may have targeted hadrosaurs, ornithomimosaurs, and pachycephalosaurs, while Despletosaurus, being slower but more powerful, would have targeted the larger and more heavily armed herbivores, such as ceratopsians and ankylosaurs. Of course these are theories, and there would have definitely been overlap, especially since both were apex predators, and likely were opportunistic hunters, taking whatever they could catch. Evidence for this comes from one fossil of Despletosaurus that had the remains of a hadrosaur in its gut. It should also be noted that Gorgosaurus fossils are far more common than Despletosaurus, so the lighter Gorgosaurus may have been more numerically dominant. A seemingly common connection between species of the Tyrannosaur family is the damage to the skulls of individuals, more specifically, bite marks on their skulls. Now of course bite marks have been seen on other predator species, but there are many examples on Tyrannosaurs, with two individuals of Despletosaurus, one being of a subadult that actually survived its injuries and healed, and another of an adult specimen. The bite marks were clearly inflicted by another Tyrannosaur. These could be from fights with Gorgosaurus, since they lived together. However, it is more accepted that these injuries were caused by members of their own kind. Intraspecific combat over food, territory, mates, or dominance in a social group. The fact that some of these fights resulted in punctures through the skull bones shows that these fights must have gotten extremely deadly and bloody, but also the fact that a few of these individuals survived their injuries 
shows just how tough these animals really were, having to not only battle each other, but also the illnesses and viruses that would have come from such catastrophic wounds. Many questions have been raised on pack behaviour in large predatory dinosaurs, and Aspletosaurus, weirdly enough, gives us more questions than answers. A bone bed that contains five hadrosaurs and three Despletosaurus was found in Montana, with the hadrosaurs having bite marks on their bones. But despite them all being together, and it unlikely that these dinosaurs were deposited by, say, a flowing river, this does not really support pack behaviour. For one, it's not clear how any of these dinosaurs died, and the three Despletosaurus are different ages, with one adult, one subadult, and one juvenile so it's possible that they all came to the site individually at different times. One theory is that the hadrosaurs died from some sort of environmental event, like poison gas from a volcano, and then the Despletosaurus came to feed on the carcasses and succumbed to the gas themselves, before all of them became buried. Because of the wealth of fossils for Tyrannosaurs, scientists have been able to calculate their growth rates as they age. Despletosaurus and other Tyrannosaurs spent their first years as small, gracile predators, putting on little weight. However, upon reaching around the middle of their lives, they would go through a massive growth stage over four years, putting on mass amounts of weight and growing to their full size. Despletosaurus could put on between 200 and 380 kilograms every year in that time period to reach their adult size, and other members of the Tyrannosaurs make the same transformation, though to different sizes. Incredible to think that after living for much of their lives being small and lightweight, these carnivores suddenly transform into heavy and powerful predators, changing not only their bodies, but also what animals they fed upon. Despletosaurus provides an excellent look at the complex ecosystem of North America 75 million years ago. From how they interacted with each other, to how they lived alongside other large carnivores, and of course, their role as top predator. But what do you think of Despletosaurus? I hope you enjoyed the different take on the narrative section of this episode, as I wanted to try something different, as I do cover quite a lot of theropods on this channel. But as usual, what extinct creature would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.